Although I'm only in the fifth grade, it seems like I've been going to school forever. I'm used to having my friends around all the time, even the ones I don't want to admit are friends. Uh, before I forget, oh, hold on a second, folks. Hello? Thank you, Sheila. Okay, next month, we'll be studying United States history, and I need volunteers. I'll do it, Mr. Wagner. I don't even know what you're volunteering for. <laughs> like it matters. She'll volunteer for anything. U.S. history is my favorite subject. I thought Mr. Wagner was her favorite subject. <laughs> oh, well, no, hold on, hold on, Sheila. Let me just tell you about it. Okay, what I need is a wall display of all the presidents of the United States with a picture and a short biography of each underneath. I think it's a great way to honor our country's history. A whole display of all the presidents? Whew. How many are there? Must be nearly a hundred. It'll take forever. Only 42. Oh, please, Mr. Bogner, let me do it. Well, okay then, Sheila, it's yours. But that's a lot of work for one person. It's no problem, Mr. Bogner. I can do it. I know you can, but maybe this time it would be easier if you had a partner to work with. A partner? Yeah. So why don't you choose someone to work with? Hmm. Let me see. Peter. Peter Hatcher. So how about it, Peter? Yay or nay? <laughs> you could probably use the extra credit. It's just that... I'll take that as a yay. So, you two can get started on that right away, and I will see you all tomorrow. Oh! <laughs> Howdy, partner. At first, I thought we could just divide up the 42 presidents and take 21 each. But dividing them up like that isn't really fair, because some presidents, like Lincoln, did much more than other presidents. So, one Lincoln may equal two tailors. Fine. You can do President Lincoln if I get President Kennedy. Oh, no. You can't do Jack Kennedy. Why not? Well, because he's far too challenging. You'd be better off with someone like Hoover. He's not as historically significant, but then you probably wouldn't notice. Why are you so bossy? It's bad enough we have to live in the same building and be in the same class, but now we have to do the same stupid project, too? It's only as stupid as you make it, Peter. I wish you'd just disappear. I'll have a complete list of your presidents by tomorrow. Arthur and Taft would be good for you, I think. Taft was the fattest president, you know. He weighed almost 300 pounds. And snored like a mouse! So do you! <sighs> oh, Jean. I'm so happy for you. She's off. 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 Well, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Got trees. I need this. No. You don't need this draft, Pete. Depends on where you're going. On a trip to visit the Tubman. Looks like you'll be staying a long time. That's good. Mom said I have to take a taxi, then a train, then a plane to get there. Or you could. Don't you know, Pete? Know what? But Mrs. Tubman just told Mom. No, I don't know what Mrs. Tubman told Mom. And I don't care. They can't guess, Pete. Hmm, let me see. She vacuumed up her wedding ring again? Nope. Try again. Another pigeon flew in their bathroom window? No, it's not funny, Pete. It's a catastrophe. We're spending our summer vacation with them again? No, 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 but I am going to visit them in Chicago. Where? Chicago, Illinois. The Tubmans are moving there. Mrs. Tubman has a new job. What? They're moving to Chicago? Really? All of them? Really? Sheila, too? Yes, Pete. You can cry if you want. Here. No, thanks. I only used it once. Fudge, are you really, really sure that Sheila's moving to Chicago? Yes, Pete. Isn't that just the saddest news? Oh, yes. 
That's just the saddest news I've ever heard. Oh, here's a photo of my house. Isn't it beautiful? My mom said that's my bedroom window. Maybe it's that one over there. But anyway, I even have my own bathroom. Somehow it doesn't seem real to me. It's almost too beautiful. I feel like I'm having a dream about moving away. Only I keep trying to wake up. And I can't. You're so lucky, Sheila. I'll see you later. I still can't believe it. What? About Sheila? I know. I wish she'd picked anyone but me for that stupid presents project. No, Peter. I mean about her moving away. Oh, that. What do you mean, old dad? Don't you think it'll be kind of weird that she won't be around anymore? No, it'll be great. Why are you acting like this? Like what? Like you don't even care. Why, do you? Come on, we've known her for a long time. Too long, if you ask me. What is with you, Peter? I'm just not going to miss her, that's all. Whoa, this house is huge. When are you going to move in? My mother would like to leave as soon as possible. Which reminds me, Peter. How far along are you on the President's Project? I started, why? Well, because since it has to be finished by the time I move, we're going to have to work twice as hard to get it done. Listen, Sheila, I'm not moving to Chicago, so why do I have to get my half of the project done when you do? Well, because face it, Peter, you're going to need my help. And that means spending every day after school, plus weekends together until I leave. Weekends every day? No way! Look, I don't need your help. I'd rather do the whole President's Project by myself. Fine, if that's the way you want it, then I'll hand over my research after school. Oh, you sure stepped into that one. <laughs> Sheila, I am so sorry to hear that you're moving. Are you really? Of course. You're an asset to this class. Oh, well, Mr. Bogner, that's so nice. And you're always so cheerful. And I don't know how we'll get along without you. How's it going, Peter? Oh, great. Good. Hey, I got an idea. Let me buy you an ice cream. A farewell ice cream. What do you say? Oh, I'd love that. Good. I have enough books, thanks. Oh, but this one's about Grover Cleveland. He was both the 22nd and the 24th U.S. president. Oh, but then I'm sure you knew that. What have I gotten myself into? Peter, dinner's ready. Wow, that is quite a project you've gotten yourself into. Tell me about it. Mmm, and this is delicious. Isn't this one of Jean's recipes? Yes, one of the few I can actually make. I guess I'll have to give those cookbooks back to her before she moves. <laughs> Are they going to live in a building like this one in Chicago? Chicago. That's what I said. Chicago. They're going to live in a house. Wow, a house. They're rich. Well, they'll be living in the suburbs, Fudge. Everyone lives in a house. What's a suburb? Um, it's a town outside the city. Kind of like the country. The country? Are the wild animals there? Deer? Bear? There are bears. The Chicago bears. But they play football. Football? Now I'm really confused. It's really a lot like New York, Fudge. Does Chicago have a Statue of Liberty? Well, no. How about Brooklyn Bridge? No. It sounds a lot different. I hope Sheila will be okay. Oh, she'll be just fine, Fudge. Pete's glad that the Tubbins are moving. That's not true, Fudge. Yes, it is. Pete says so, right? Pete! It's... It's hard for him to talk about it, that's all. It's okay to feel sad, Peter. I don't feel sad. I'm sorry, but I don't. I wish I'd just go ahead and move. I mean, it's all anyone's talking about how much we're all going to miss Sheila. Sheila, Sheila, Sheila. Suddenly she's the greatest thing since baseball. 
We weren't only talking about Sheila, Peter. We're talking about the whole Tubman family. Well, I'm talking about Sheila. Everything's been totally messed up ever since she announced that she was moving. I am totally swamped on my presence project. It's all her fault. Pete's not sad. Pete's mad. Yeah. Lincoln? Hello, Peter. The election results are in. I'm moving to Washington to live in the White House. I thought you were moving to Chicago. Chicago? <clears throat> Why would I move to Chicago? The White House is in Washington. You really need to work on your U.S. history, Peter. Yes, Mr. President. I'm leaving now. My country needs me. Wait, don't go! Why? You do need help with the next 26 presidents? No, because nobody wants to see you go. I mean, everyone's upset about it. Mom, Dad, Fudge, even Jimmy can't believe you're leaving. What about you, Peter? Do you want me to go? No! Sorry, I won by a landslide. Come back! I wonder what that was all about. Leave <sighs> me alone. alone. What? Fudge, give me that pull back. I can understand what you said, Pete. I said leave me alone. I just want to say goodbye, Pete. I'm going to Chicago now. To visit Sheila. Did you hear me, Pete? Yes, I heard you, you stupid blabber brain. You can't go visit Sheila because she hasn't moved yet. Now get out of here. Okay, Pete. Come on, Peter. You're going to be late for school. Uh. Sheila! Hi, Fudgy. Here's some things that somehow ended up at our house. Your brother hasn't heard that the early bird gets the worm. Why don't you move, Sheila? Hutch, you want me to move? Yep, so I can go and visit. See, I'm all packed. Oh, fudgy. And so sweet. I'd love for you to come visit me. Sheila? Yes, Fudgy? I thought we were going to get married. We are. We'll just have to have a long-distance romance. I wish you weren't moving to Chicago. Me too. Breakfast is on the table, Peter. After that, you're on your own. Bye. Bye, Sheila. Come on, Fudge. You don't want to be late for school. What about Pete? Oh, he'll be down. He had a slow start this morning. Oh, Jean, hi. How is Chicago? <sighs> a nice place to visit. What? I have some news. We've decided not to move. You're not moving to Chicago? No, Fudge. We're staying here. You see, certain promises for my new job failed to materialize, and, well, to be perfectly honest, I was very disappointed. Oh, and the final straw was my office. Instead of a corner office, I had one in the middle, with a view of the corner office. Oh. Were there cows in the suburbs? I have expected there to be. It was so quiet, and lots of trees. 
I'm not used to so much plant life. In Chicago, there are bears who play football. Hmm. Didn't see any of them. <laughs> well, now I have to unpack, but I have a system. Just reverse the order of my lists. <laughs> well, I'm sorry it didn't work out. Oh, well, tomorrow's another day, right? <laughs> yep, Thursday. <laughs> well, I want to catch Sheila before she leaves for school and give her the good news. Oh, she'll be so happy. But I think she was devastated by the whole idea of moving. Well, we're awfully glad you don't have to move. Between you and me, same here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wilson, Harding, Coolidge, Hoover. T-W-H-C-H. -H. How elementary. What are you on? Just wanting to see how it was going. It's going fine, thanks. Now why don't you get going? Bye. Good luck in Chicago. Have a nice life. Can we talk about Chicago, Peter? No. Let's see, after Hoover is... Roosevelt. I knew that. I have something to tell you about Chicago, Peter. Me too. No prisoner was born there or is buried there. Look, Peter. No, I've already said goodbye and good luck. What more do you want? I don't want anything. Good, because I'm not going to say I'll miss you. No, you'd never want to do anything like that. And I'm not going to miss you. I'm not going to miss you either. Okay, maybe I will miss you just a little tiny bit. Just maybe. You'll miss me? Yeah, I guess. You know, you're, you're really doing a pretty good job on that project. Except the Roosevelts are out of order. Everyone knows Teddy came before Franklin. Oh, thanks. printed a little more clearly on William Henry Harrison. Even though he did die after only 31 days in office, he still deserves better printing. Is that all? No, Peter, it's not. Just look at this paper you're using. Did you have to choose blue? Yellow is so much brighter. Well, this project has to be up to my standards. You know, I'm not going to just disappear, Peter. Did I actually say I was going to miss her? So <sighs> what did Peter say when you told him you weren't moving? He doesn't know yet. You haven't told him? Well, I tried to, but it didn't seem like the right time. Hey, Peter. Happy hey, Peter. Hey, you dropped this, Peter. Oh, thanks. Don't you think you should tell him, Sheila? I guess I'm going to have to, eventually. Mm -hmm. 